Okay, let's do this. Hey, it's Chris, and this is the pinball. <laughs> See, it's been too damn long, Jared. You Goodbye. are watching the Blockade right, Pinball people. Podcast. <laughs> My name is Chris, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. And uh, his name is Jared Morgan. He lives in Australia. <laughs> G'day, mates. How you going? Long I'm time no gonna... speak and see and listen and stuff. See, I told you, I'm completely out of practice on this, man. You, you, you go away for two weeks and I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> what how we do a, how do we do a podcast again yeah. you, you've you've got me uh in solo mode that's uh which, which used to terrify me but now i'm kind of getting used to it but it's still see you don't need me anymore no 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 no, no that is completely false absolutely <laughs> false because you have no idea how difficult it is to like when your brain farts and you don't want to just sit there going um um <laughs> And you're like looking at the comments section going, please, somebody pipe somebody in. Somebody get me out of jail here. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was nice. I just caught you picking your ear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see, it's value adding on the stream. It was itchy. I've got these little, I think I've got like old man ears now because like, I'm, I'm going to be 40 in a couple of days, mate. So uh, my, my birthday is coming up and uh, it's a big four zero. And I think I'm getting the old man hairs sticking out of my ears. So it tickles. Yeah, when you, when you suddenly find a hair that's about an inch long coming out your ear, <laughs> that's, that's, that's when you just go, what in the hell is that? And get the tweezers. Why is, and... <laughs> why is Thulu hanging out of my eardrum here? Like, he's <laughs> going, you know? I, I always sit there and I wonder, you know, you'll see some really old guy who's just like got the eyebrows that just go in every which direction and stuff. And, and you're sitting yeah. there wondering... Uh, why? And then you realize, uh, well, he just didn't start dealing with it early enough. <laughs> no, and they've taken root. So you know, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're permanently they're a fixture. We actually we have prime minister with the most impressive eyebrows you've ever seen in your life. Um, it, it, <laughs> this guy had the bushiest brows ever. It was amazing. I've it was Bob Hawke, I think it was. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Yeah. Very impressive eyebrows. Anyhow, that, that, that's, that's not why we're here. No, that isn't. That isn't why we're here. Absolutely. This is not the 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 blockade eyebrows podcast. This is <laughs> no. Apparently, we're supposed podcast. to talk about pinball. Um, okay. So I guess we Jeez. can we can do some of that. Why not? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, the, I've got a li I've got a little bit to talk about with regards to the pinball. Yeah, you've got you've got a few things. Um, let's let's quickly knock something out. So. Just okay. uh, today, um, Zacharia Pinball they did a their own Twitch stream with uh, the guy, one of the guys, Kevin from Buffalo Pinball, and within that, Mart was basically announcing that the Android app, the mobile app of Zacharia Pinball, is done. And hey, that's good. Yeah, and it should be being released, like any time now um and part of what went into that yes it's going to have all the remakes yes it's going to have the U new ui um it's basically as much of a direct port from the steam version as they could and that includes yeah. how it looks and that's um, pretty impressive yeah it looks pretty good on steam yeah um and even how it plays uh they're price wise they're going to have kind of that gold pack issue um, they're also going to have, I think like the retro tables are only going to be like three bucks for the entire pack. Oh, jeez, uh, that's cheap. No, 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 no. They've, they've got some really economical, uh, uh, pricing going on for certain things. Uh, he said they will be selling each table individually. Uh, basically they're all okay. two bucks unless you go with the remake. So those are going to be three bucks. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the remakes are worth checking out. They're good. Yeah. And then... They're, they're not a far sight they're not a far sight remake these are actually good <laughs> <laughs> and then as far as uh, all of you Android users like Jared that owned the previous mm. version uh, they will not know how that works until they go live so that's, right yeah that's kind of the bummer of it but that's how Google is set up there's no way of 
previewing it for them until it's actually live, and then they'll try and take care of whatever the uh, the issues of that nature are. Uh, and then I asked, when can iOS users expect this? And it, well, I was kind of surprised. He, they're aiming for sometime in September. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So that's that's pretty soon. Very soon, actually. Yeah, very soon. He said something. there was something about uh, uh, an issue with OpenGL. Does that sound right, Jared? It's yep, OpenGL is a thing, yep. Yeah, that I guess uh, Apple's not friendly with or whatever. So they're basically trying to work around the, the situation. Yeah, I think OpenGL is quite quite a common uh, graphics um, framework on Android, but I think they use something subtly different on on Apple, so that would be causing a few little hiccups, I think. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's that's kind of the uh, the Zachariah news. Um, oh, and Woods Queen just got released, and they're announcing. Uh, and I didn't watch far enough n to know if it got announced. I think he was saying it was going to announce, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut just in case I'm not supposed to say anything. But the final remake mm -hmm. table um, should be coming out in about two weeks, also. Okay. Well, that's very cool. Yes. Um, so they they will have completed the set then. They will have completed the set, but that is not to say that they don't have more tricks up their sleeve. Uh, uh. I guess they they had a game out on mobile prior to Zacharia Pinball. Uh, was it, it was a it, hill race game. No, 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 no. It was a pinball game, but I think it was called Age of Pinball. If oh, that okay. Sounds familiar. Basically, there's a bunch of tables that you can earn to play via achievement. Um, oh, okay. If you get achievements, they'll open them up, those tables up, and they think those were from Age of Pinball. And I think they're planning on doing something with those. Um, whether there was a couple that didn't get translated yet, or maybe they're going to do remakes of those. I don't know. But uh, I know that they've got other stuff up in the works. So this isn't the end. Cool. Uh, you know, just because they're going to be done with the remakes doesn't mean that's the end of Zacharia. No, they've got more more and more and of course i encouraged mart that they need really need to check out the gottlieb license <laughs> they really do like i don't know what's happening up in big bear with that Shouldn't although apparently i've heard that there there is an announcement pending soon according to somebody's post in uh digital pinball fans but i don't know what that means because i thought there was an announcement pending soon about five months ago now uh, it was actually about a year ago <laughs> a year ago all oh, right okay yeah yeah, yeah no Timely. Um, <laughs> over on the uh, Zen Pinball end of things, also with their mobile app, also with Android, they have gone and done a whole host of fixes to that. Yeah. It's it's a huge, huge quality of life um, uh, patch, I guess you could say. Um, and I've got the the show notes here that the, not show notes, <laughs> the <patch> notes. <laughs> that would be yeah. us not them <laughs> that'll be us and they actually post these on reddit if you're interested so you can go to r slash pinball fx3 and uh these are all up on um uh, on the official pinball fx3 channel um and th yeah, there's a laundry list of of uh patch notes here so there are the the, the the highlights <clears throat> for me are that they reduce the friction of the ramps on Medieval Madness, meaning no mm -hmm. longer is the ball going to stall out when you're shooting the dragon ramp and come back rolling yes. at you, that it probably will actually be able to be accomplished with a running shot. And, That'd be nice. Yeah. And then on Theater of Magic, they've fixed it so that the when you're shooting the inner loop, so the ball, uh, ball lock loop, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. that the ball will transfer to the proper flipper as opposed to doing what it's doing now where it goes completely diagonal to where it should be going sometimes um, right which if you I know if you've watched uh, Spacey's Arcade he showed that off to brilliant effect right I also noticed that they did some <clears throat> work with a bit of an accelerator ball issue um, in the rollover area um, when you were on pro physics it looks like the ball was speeding up quite unconvincingly in that area so They've done some fixes there, and um, they've also increased the upper source's strength um, when using um, Zen and Pro Physics, so it pops out a bit harder, which is which will be good too, because it you do need to actually have that ball pop out quite fast for it to contact the bumpers, and then 
ricochet around in the drop target area so you can get the the locks so it's important for them to actually have quite a, a hard kick out there yeah and apparently there was issues de uh, also depending upon uh, what version of android you were running on that it was causing issues with the kickups oh is that right oh okay um I, I think i'm getting that i think i'm getting that correctly but yeah let me just check uh there was a note uh on some devices with lower frames uh frames per second for black rose uh the pirate's cove may have shot back the ball with a delay or did not shoot back at all so <laughs> that's not ideal no that kind of makes it not very playable <laughs> no um yeah not not much fun so that's good look this is just one of those massive um quality of life patches that you see a lot now in games um and it's it's great that they're continuing to just slowly fix things that have been identified over the over the months the past months yeah so hopefully, make a, hopefully we'll see make, some of those uh well i think they will make their way into ios but more importantly make their way into steam because i know that the ramp issue is also there <laughs> in steam in terms of what the friction was yes yeah it's the same isn't it so yeah it'll be good to see it all sort of cross pollinate around yeah yeah um no we don't have any release notes for uh zen other than the fact that september 13th star wars uh, pinball coming out on the switch that is where all of zen's attention is focused that's where all their promotion is going to go and i think that if you were trying to keep the mouse house uh happy you would be doing that too <laughs> Yeah, yeah, keep the mouse house. I'm very happy, thank you. Thank you, please. I mean, I, uh, I mentioned it previously in the fakey uh, podcast, but I'll make it official in the official podcast. When you have a property like this, you treat it with the absolute laser focus necessary to keep the giant corporation going, you know what? We, we like we, you. We like what you've done in the past, you're continuing to prove that you're a valuable uh, resource for us, and we'll continue to let you playing with our assets in the future. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. You don't um, want to mess that up. No, you know, and and that's what I, I... Again, it comes down to when I used to say about the Kickstarters, where it makes the product look bad if it's yeah. not instantly funded. Yeah. Um, and although this is not a Kickstarter by any stretch of the imagination, it would look bad if you were also advertising, uh, although it's still pinball, but another pinball, you know, if you were advertising volume five and that advertising is kind of competing, especially since the Star Wars pinball app is going to be separate from the Williams, or not from Williams, but from the FX3 app. It's not integrated in. Mm-mm. Um, which that means also that uh, tournaments are purely going to be played between Switch players. Um, you're not going to be able to have interaction with any of the other platforms uh, and none of your scores or super scores or any of that are going to filter over to FX3. It's a completely separate entity, basically. Yep. Which I'm... I mean, if there's anything that I kind of go, oh, that's kind of a bummer. That is what I would go, that's kind of a bummer. But, again, I understand. I mean, and the price, well, they're, yeah. they're, they're asking $30 US for it, for 19 tables. Which wow. Is, yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. And this would be, this is a DLC, um, and not the cartridge. Phys and physical cartridge. <clears throat> oh, it's 30 bucks for the cartridge. Yep. That's yep. cheap. Yep. So, in, in Australia, you'd be looking at probably ninety dollars, but no, I think somebody um, said it was closer to forty-two or something like that. I think it was in Australia. Uh, yeah. I, I could have sworn the person that I saw posting it was from Australia, and they saw it on pre-sale. Uh, on pre-sale pre price, and they were asking, "Hey, should I get the? Is there a difference between the cartridge and the the DLC, basically?" And the the there was that for the DLC. The cartridge was going to be more, but then. They were like, well, I want to support Zen the best. And as somebody pointed out, well, Zen already spent their money on producing the cartridge. So if you pick up the cartridge, then you're supporting Paying Zen. Paying back them. Exactly. Because yeah. <laughs> they had to lay that money out <clears throat> ahead of time. Um, That's right. They got to prepay it. Yeah. 
Yeah, which is which is why we we suspect that it's taken as long as it has to actually get this out to market. Oh yeah, um, it, I mean it has to go through <clears throat> all of that QA, or, you know, quality assurance, uh, especially yeah. in cartridge form. You know, I mean it's got to be ready to go, ready to rock. Yeah, because these because the cartridges that uh, the Switch use are like little SD cards, eh? Oh Basically. yeah, they're they're yeah they're little tiny SD cards. So they're they're not so much like an old school cartridge where they had like a, a PCB in them with like chips and stuff mounted on them. So they're not like a daughter board to the the console, but they're still you know a solid state piece of software that needs to work in a certain way. So yep, yeah, pretty much. Um, so anyway, that's that's basically all the. Oh, that's not all the Zen news I have. No, I take that back. I was about to wrap out the Zen stuff and get to you. Uh, we'll get to you. Oh, Don't okay. worry, Jared, because you're going to talk a while. I know it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the mobile app, they have added another timed event. And this time you are playing Theater of Magic. And they call it a laddered event. And I did it live on air the other day. And I got a bunch of tickets like 75 tickets for the first for the easy match which i went oh boy and then the second match and basically the first one was playing five minute challenge second one was survival and the third one on hard was the one ball but the second match survival um i got seven coins in one drop and then for the third one i got three coins but i have a feeling if i was still needing parts that that's probably what that would have been would be uh table parts so anyway Play the mm. play the limited timed match on the mobile app. Yeah, get in it. Get in it. It's, okay. It's cool that they're mixing things up. Like it's it's great to see different play styles coming in and and keeping the interest up in the app to keep you coming back, right? Exactly. Uh, and I that's what I was hoping the... that they were going to do with that <clears> limited <throat> event. With that, it would you know it's a limited event. I don't expect it weekly or anything, but do something with it because it's too great of an opportunity to just let's sit there and it does draw people back in even when they're kind of like you know maybe they're done with it for a while maybe they've collected too many coins and they're just kind of like yeah i really don't need it but no hop back into a limited event they're fun it's going back to the uh the patch notes for android there's a in the general updates there's something that's going to help with that as well and the fact that we get push notifications now but there's a an important note here to point out and that they can be turned on to inform about challenges and league results. So you don't default to on and then have people turn them off. Right. So that's that's the correct way to do push notifications, folks. Yes. Uh, I'm seeing yeah. over here in the uh, in the comments section that uh, for that third challenge, uh, it was three lots of two table parts, so six table parts in total. That would be if you hadn't already maxed out your table parts. So for someone like me who's already maxed about, I just got three cards of one coin per card okay that's well that's good so like i said i, I kind of figured that one of them would be giving giving table parts if if need be um but as it is with my guess that we're not going to see volume five until after <laughs> obviously after the uh, uh star wars release on september the 13th uh that gives you plenty of time to earn Lots and lots of coin and um, even more parts before yeah. that one drops. Absolutely. So. Jeez. Yeah. Okay, Jared, I've kept you waiting long enough. Uh, Jared, tell us what you've been doing the past few weeks and uh, at the Brisbane Pinball event. Yeah. So yesterday was um, the second event that the uh, Brisbane Pinball and Arcade Collective ran at the Brisbane Showgrounds as part of the ECA this year. And it was that the first event, which was held on Friday, was a pump and dump event where people are just basically trying to get the best score. I'd, I, whenever that's I a, that's, a, that's that a great name, name for a pump and dump. Mm. Pump and dump. <laughs> Is it a gas yeah. station? Is it a? Uh, no, I'm not going to go there. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I, I get the same sort of imagery when I hear the word pump and dump. Anyhow, it's a format and you, you play it in pinball. So um, that was yesterday and it was there were some photos floating around from uh, the guys who were managing the event and it was packed. There were heaps of people playing all the moderns because it was done in the modern row. Um, <clears throat> yeah, very, very busy. So uh, yesterday though was 
the event that my star race was in and that was the classic targets match play and that event is an event style i haven't actually been um a part of before so what you do is that the general idea is you you get paired up through the match play software with up to four players um and it changes every every round so you get a random machine picked for you and a random set of players and that's really good because you get to meet a lot of different folks and uh, introduce yourself to them and sort of during the scope of the game, learn a bit more about them and where they're from and that sort of thing. So, so it, it's, so it it's was a, random, not, not <clears throat> seated. It was, it was random for the first three rounds, I think. Okay. And then after, <clears throat> after the data started coming through, I think they then started to seed you into sort of groups that were about the same skill level. Um, and based on my initial three games, I was seated with with folks down the bottom end of the list because <laughs> the way it works is it, for first, second, third, fourth, it's seven, five, three, one. That's the points you get. So if you win, you get seven. If you're last, you get one. Um, and I got two ones in my first two games because they were both EMs yeah. and I'd never, I'd never played them before. So backtracking a bit, what you do is you – when you uh, get your group, you go and meet them at the table, introduce yourself and work out first whether you want to have a practice go. And obviously the answer is always yes, we would like a practice go on these pinballs that we've never seen before. Um, so um, That's usually nice. And, and <clears throat> it, it, what's funny with the practice goes is I always forget to check the tilt sensor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep, exactly. Check the t- uh, tilt sensor. If there's a skill shot, check the plunge as well. Exactly. That's the thing you do. Yeah. But so, those are things that instead you're just like, ooh, pinball, shiny, let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was very hard to resist the, that temptation just to keep flipping. But yeah, you need to you need to give that thing a shake and see what it's doing, uh, see what the plumb bob's doing, and you know just check to see if um, the 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 plunger is hard or soft or you know just just those little things that will trip you up in the game. So yeah, you you do your practice rounds and then you you start the game. So depending on the game. Um, some games are single player only, even if they're like like solid states, because you could steal locks. So you have to play your games like single player. No, um, stealing locks is such a great like. It, okay, yes, it punishes whoever the first player is, but usually the first player is the lowest seated of the people. But that like that's what makes multiplayer pinball like exciting. <laughs> Well, yes, except in a tournament setting where you feel cheated if, if someone steals all your locks that you've been building up, like especially on games that are quite challenging to build locks up on. Um, it's a it's a real deflating uh, experience when you're playing in tournament uh, to have that happen. I mean, that's what our so, league was doing, which I guess is was tournament. I mean, when we were keeping score like that. But yeah, okay. yeah. anyway, go on. This was an I IFPA get your point. I get your point. I get your point. Yeah, this was an IFPA sanctioned event, so we had to do it according to the IFPA rules. Um, so yeah, so the first game um, that I played was a retheme of a uh, a Gottlieb EM Snow Queen, and the the, the person who did this was actually uh, Dr. John Cosson's um, daughter, and she had rethemed it to Stranger Things. Oh, nice. Um, Based on Netflix, it even had Netflix logos all over it. And everything. <laughs> so it was like proper. When, but when you put a coin in, did it go bong or whatever? The... <laughs> it it no, it didn't. But because it was an EM, it Aww. should have had a really big, deep chime in it that exactly. you that they rewired. Big gong, like a big uh, yeah. Well, anyhow, it's that, it's that it you know, been... whenever you select Netflix, the that that noise that starts when you first do it. But anyway, good. Mm. But anyhow, so. That was a uh, the first one, and I was matched up against um, um, three other dudes. And the thing with that, I think I got ripped off on it because I think there was a score real issue, like a, a scoring a, a scoring motor issue on it. Because all of a sudden, like th- this game scores in the tens and the hundreds, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> in other words, it's, it's it was started... kind of like a uh, um, what is that uh, a Jersey Jack pinball. Yeah, or, or Central Park. If you think of the scoring yeah. that you get on Central Park, it's basically like that. So all of a sudden, these these guys are playing their turn and they start getting thousands rolling up on the wheel. Oh. Like 1,000, 2,000, nice. 3,000, 4,000, like that. And I'm going, what are you doing to do that? 
And they go, I've got no idea. And what I think has been happening is, um, I should have I should have called over a tournament director because that's a clear malfunction of the of the circuit. And I got last because oh. all the three other dudes got that, and I didn't get that. So, um, yeah, I think there's a there's three pop bumpers. Two on the the outside award a certain point value, but the one in the middle is like the the high score uh, the high score um, pop bumper. And it should have been awarding 100 points, but I think it was actually awarding 1,000. So it was a bit of a ripoff. I think if I had my time again, I would have actually called a TD over and got them to take that, strike that game out because, and it ended up dying anyhow. Like it, it stopped working shortly after we played, I think. Um, so that was game one. Game two was another EM called Jet Spin. And um, it's uh, another pretty brutal Gottlieb EM. I mean, all EMs are brutal. They're going to kick your ass, basically. Yeah, especially um, if you haven't. Uh... If you don't have a lot of experience on them, it's like, yeah, that's right. sure, everybody goes, oh, they're so easy. They're so simple. No. <laughs> no. No, they're, they're out lanes are cavernous and and they will mess you up. Yeah. So so the that was Jet Spin. Uh, see you later. That was another like one point affair for me. And then $6 billion man came up, which is a uh, early solid state. So the if you haven't played that one before, this is probably the first... Um, solid state pinball that allowed you to play six players at once um which yeah only how many come... how many others since then have done that not not too many if any yeah um so it was its big feature like having six six million dollar man six players so um i ended up getting um managed i think a third on that one maybe and the only reason why I did that is because I managed to get one of the features in the game. When you complete the the fifty thousand targets, um, there's five of them. You get fifty thousand points, and that makes a big difference in that game. So I, it clawed me back to a half decent place. Um, and then a favorite of pinball arcade, like, hey, we got to play Paragon in real life. <laughs> Had you ever uh, touched a Bally wide body, ultra wide body like that before? No, no, I'd never touched one before. And uh, the thing that was killing me is that um, lower left pop bumper that drains basically to the to the out lane or yeah. to the out hole. The ball, I don't know what was going on, but it was bypassing everything in that area and just going straight down the out lane, not even hitting the pop bumper, oh. like making a beeline for that hole. And nothing I could do about it. I was just, it was just it, twice in one game it happened. It killed me. It was it was punishment. But it was a fun game to play. Like in, in real life, it is as floaty as it is in, in Pimble Arcade. And um, even with it cranked up really, really steep, it's still floaty. Um, yeah, so imagine, and... imagine <clears throat> it not set to tournament uh, uh, rake and just on <laughs> what normal pinball operators set it on. It's uber floaty. Oh, man. <laughs> You'd be, you could go out and get a, a beer, come back, and your ball would still be making its way down to the flippers, you know? Um, well, what I always like to say is, is you know it's going to go straight down the middle about three seconds before it actually does. <laughs> and oh, that's, yeah. that is the most painful three seconds you've ever been in. There's nothing you can do about it. But it was in good nick. Like, the flippers were nice and strong, and, and it was just really brutal to play, which is of the era. Like, that's yeah. how they play. Yeah. Um, and then we played uh, Blackjack. This one had a few issues with it. There was some targets that were constantly scoring, so they had to actually take the targets out of out of the machine and actually disconnect them because they couldn't work out why they were actually triggering all the time. Oh, okay, so, so who who was that by? Who uh, what manufacturer? Blackjack is a Williams, I think. I'm, I'm purely asking because that's what has happened on my Eight Ball Deluxe where after I've done all of my drop targets and then I go and I hit a target behind, you know, the, the stand-up targets that were behind the drop targets, all of a sudden it would just just fire nonstop scoring. I'm like, what in the world happened? Um, yeah. And it's really annoying because then I have to turn off the game. <laughs> I think it's of the same era. So Blackjack, so underneath the play field when, when um, the owner of the game was there, he lifted it up and each of the targets has what looks like an inline capacitor um, underneath it. So there's like, there's a diode 
because it's using a uh, a switch matrix in that game. But there's also some sort of green capacitor um, attached to each one. And some of them were connected and some of them were disconnected. So I don't know what was going on there. Like the operator was saying, oh, look, you know, when I disconnected this one, it started working better. So I just left it off. I went, okay, it's an interesting approach. But um, <laughs> Um, <clears throat> no, we don't need that component. It's like, you know, performance enhancing cars where bits fall off it and it still keeps running. Oh, we didn't need that bit. That just lightens the load. Right. You know. Exactly. <clears throat> you know, when you're when you're performing surgery and you have an extra organ just lying there, you know, you're, uh, no, everything fit fine. Ah, we're good. Leave it up. <laughs> yeah, just leave it up. Don't, don't need that. That's fine. So then we started moving on to some um, some more modern games after that. So oh, hold, hold on. I got an update on the, uh, on the uh, chat board here. Uh, oh, yeah. It says it's a Bally machine, not Williams. And guess what a ball deluxe is? Bally. Bally. Guess what I'm going uh, to go look and see if if there is attached, because <laughs> that might be the answer to my uh, to my issue. Okay. Yep, that sounds like about right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so um, the next one we got to play was a very nicely restored high speed. So this was. It looked like it was brand new out of the box, actually. Like the play field had been cleared. Um, it, all the plastics looked like they got a new old stock set. Um, it had LCD um, uh, alphanumerics in the back glass. The back glass was clean. It was really, really nice. Um, and it played fast. Uh, that's a fast game. As with a, a with Steve a, Ritchie table should. Yeah, exactly right. And this thing, there's a trick with that one. The really cool thing about match play is that when you're in an event like that and you're up for a round, it'll actually, it has a link to go to the table's pin tips. Um, then pin tips are a thing that a user contributed set of uh, tips for playing the game to get a good score. It was really handy just to be able to go, oh, tap and go, oh, so with that one, when your ball is in the shooter lane, a good tactic is to just give the ball a tap. So the tachometer like goes up and then back down again. And when it settles, you do full plunge and you'll get, uh, providing your machine is capable of actually doing a full plunge and getting around the ramp, um, you'll actually get a spot target if you do that. So you'll get one of the traffic light spot targets around the uh, thing. So it's an easy way to actually build up multi-ball uh, on that game without very much effort at all. And the other safest thing on that game is to um, shoot the spinner and get it in the saucer because you also get a spotlight from there as well. And you can also have a go at the ramp from that saucer as well. So it's a, it's a good way, a good safe way of actually playing that game. And I did okay. I got like 800,000 on it, which is relatively respectable. So that was sort of like the start of a relatively decent, I think I got second on that game, which was a nice turn of events because up until that point I was doing terribly. Um, so um, then back onto the EMs, we played Conquest 2000 or two, Conquest 200, which is uh, another pretty brutal um, Gottlieb EM. Um, nothing to say there. I, I think I managed to get second on that, but it was just by pure luck, as it is with EM. <laughs> and then we got to play one that is an Australian pinball machine. So this is produced by a manufacturer called Hankin, and this game is called Orbit One. And it's a really, really basic solid-state pinball. You've really only got a couple of shots that, to take on it. And... It's all about the essentially the orbit shots, orbit one, because it's all about space uh, rocket launches and stuff. It's not much to really say about that. It's it's not a great <laughs> game it, to play. It, it, it's all about the artwork, and that's about it. It's not even about the artwork. The artwork oh no! <laughs> it's it's a pretty it's a pretty bleak looking game. Um, it's not one that I think it's 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 importance from an historical perspective far outweighs its actual value as a game um because it's not much fun yeah um and then though I, we got i got to play a game that i had not played since i was about 15 and i was working in the pinball arcade that i first got my start in the in the industry in and it was big guns oh yeah the <clears> system <throat> 11 table with no pop bumpers if i recall correctly uh, you're correct. No pop bumpers because it's basically loaded up with big uh, catapults. It's got two cross play field pat catapults that you lock the balls in. And um, when you get multi ball, so you basically lock the ball left, lock the ball right, then shoot up the middle to get multi ball. And that's that's about it. Now, the, the, the pin tips on that one are worth reading because there's actually a hidden skill shot on that game. 
that if you're aware of it, you know where it is. But if you're not, you'll just full plunge and go around the loop. But if you can get the ball in this little lane um, and you can do it consistently, you'll get a lock every single time doing it. And you can fast track your way to multi-ball. And I was able to do that two times. It was really hard to dial it in because when you plunge the ball and it goes around that the loop, the loop itself is actually pretty like flat from a rate perspective. So your ball's just got to dribble into the lane and get your lock. And it's really hard to do. Um, but yeah, if you can do it, it's a very quick way of starting multiple. And I got a reasonable score on that. I think I got like close to 900,000. But there was this guy who is like an absolute legend um, player. He's a young guy called Logan Jones. And he had never played the game in his life. And he got, <laughs> oh, I hate people like this. <laughs> he got, he like basically uh, one of the um, guys, the other guys there is a really good player that I played in the first round um, called, uh, um, or actually uh, not the um, first round, the third round on $6 million man called Paul Jones. He gave um, Logan Jones, his son, the tip um, to, oh, you just shoot the locks, basically shoot the left lock, right lock, up the middle and start multi ball. This guy is an absolute gun with with playing. He can just his flipper technique is amazing, and he's just one of those really top end players. And he got two million on the thing, which is no mean feat on big guns. Like it's a hard slog to get that. So really great player, and yeah, well and truly happy for him to take the win. So that one was Logan first, and David Peck from New Zealand, um, then me, and then Kerry. Um, so the last one is a game, the second last one is one that I was familiar with, and that was Trident. Trident's a game that's on the floor at Netherworld, and it's a what they call a pin game. So if you get the high, the wizard score on it, you get a pin. That wizard score is 500,000 points. And that may sound low, but let me tell you, that is hard work trying to get 500,000 points. Uh, and... In my match, I was about 30,000 points short of that score. So, would, would Netherworld have given you a pin if you'd gone there in tournament? <laughs> yes, I, re- I reckon I was gunning for it. I said, Look, if I can get the 500,000, I'm snapping that and I'm showing it to Netherworld when I go back there again, saying, Here's my pin score, give it to me. <laughs> and I was so annoyed that I didn't get it. But, you know, it's it was just one of those amazing it was a set a little i think it was actually set a little bit easier there than it was at netherworld like the rake on it at netherworld is so steep for that era of, of game it's sort of like a challenge to get up to the top of the play field but um i had a really fun game on that it was great and the last game was quicksilver and this is a i think a, a belly williams game um i'm not sure which manufacturer i have a feeling it's on oh no, a stern quicksilver actually it's a stern game um and this was stern electronics right stern electronics yeah 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 and this this game mint it had been completely i think the play field was a one of the uh reproduction play fields okay and it had been cleared beautifully and everything looked new on it the cabinet was beautiful all the chrome was super high luster chrome man this thing was was really nice um so we we played that and this was the last the last match that i was in um there was no way i was going to get in the finals um because they're like it was like the first the first players to get over 50 points uh the, the first 16 players to get over 50 points went to the finals and i was like i think i was about 10 points off if i got first place on quicksilver so <laughs> no no bueno for me in the finals but it was a good matchup because we had a lot of a lot of uh, folks that I'd sort of like. I had a fun group, you know, when you get matched up in a group, and it's just like people who aren't super serious about pinball, like they're not. Yeah, they're, they're not. They're betting. not yelling at you because you nudge too hard. Now they have to wait a minute for the uh, tilt bob to settle down. <laughs> oh yeah, or you know, they're well, they're just like they're all they care about is winning the game. Like there's a there's a few folks at that tournament and certainly at the Brisbane Pinball Club that they they take a little bit too serious like it's just pinball like you, you you don't need to treat it like a combat sport yeah um and anyhow uh the these folks there was one um player who had flown in from uh the u.s called jessica donato and jessica is the uh uh the person who set up bells and chimes um over in the u.s 
um, which is the all women uh, pinball clubs. And uh, she's a lovely, lovely person. It was great to catch up with her again and um, and uh, see how she was going. And she's got her own brand of um, of merchandise now on the under the Soft Plunge label. Um, so check that out if you want some really sweet looking, um, uh, more feminine style pinball stuff. Um, they got really good stress balls actually. They're silver and they're really, really squishy. So if you are stressed out. Maybe some of the people who who are playing in the tournament could do with uh, <laughs> some stress balls to chill out a bit. Maybe I don't know, but yeah, that was the last game, unfortunately, and uh, that was my exit from the tournament. But you know, it was good because being at the exhibition, you can then go and and gorge on carnival food, right? So this <laughs> oh, I is thought you were show... going to say gorge on you know other pinball, but okay, carnival food, go for it. <laughs> no, I did that too. I did that too, but. The food at carnivals, like, you know, there's a certain style of food that you get at carnivals that's you would never have normally. Correct. But it's weird combinations and everything is deep fried. Exactly right. Yeah. So I'm sure you have this style of thing because this is, you know, this this meets the brief of the podcast. We're talking about food here on the podcast and we haven't <laughs> done that for a while. So the food yeah, pin, you get at pinball carnival, movie snacks, but mostly pinball. Mostly pinball. Um, with this, the, the food you get, mm. and this is one of the things that I think it goes by a number of different names. Um, but we call them Dagwood dogs here. And that is a, one of those red sausages, deep fried in batter with a stick and you cover it with tomato sauce. Um, and you're looking at me strangely, Chris. No, I don't think you've ever I, heard of this thing. I can't say, you know, we do hot dog on a stick. But we don't do that bright red sausage thing that I refuse to admit is a hot dog in Australia because it's just yeah. gross. Um, <laughs> they call them saveloys, I think. There is the name. And, and we certainly don't then slather it in <laughs> tomato sauce. Well, you put well. That's when you get through the batter casing on it. Like you, what they do is they get a sausage, they stick a, a stick up its butt, and then they. <laughs> They batter it. They dump it in a big like container of batter, yeah. and then they deep fry that sucker hole. Yeah, and then that, that's hot dog on a stick, uh huh. That, that, that's hot dog on a stick. So that's what, must be what you call it. So hot dog and, on and a stick. And then and then you will eat it with ketchup. Well, tomato sauce is ketchup. So, oh, that that's the Australian word for ketchup. Yeah, yeah, tomato sauce. Okay. Yeah. So. We, we, we do have ketchup here. We have Heinz ketchup here. And yes, they are different, I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> before you start debating it. I was going um, well, to say, well, there's ketchup and then there's catsup. Catsup, yeah. Which, which, which I've never yeah. understand what the difference between any of that is, but that's okay. Uh, so I had one of those and that was, that was one, one was enough. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And then I had uh, this, uh, you know. Oh, wait, wait a second, Jared. The, the, the question here is, uh, how do you know which end of the sausage is the butt end? You make an educated guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you get it wrong. Uh, but, if, you know. if the hot dog gags, you know you got the wrong end. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but if, if the hot dog presses its lips, you know you got the right end. <laughs> uh, anyhow. Uh, so the other thing I had there was this, um, yeah, the, the exhibition is of course an agricultural show. So it, the idea is they showcase local produce and I had this really, really nice, um, slow cooked meat roll with gravy and, and chips on the side. And that was actually half decent and it was really, really tasty. And they had, uh, beer at cruise prices there. So what when I say beer mean? at cruise, well, beer at cruise prices, you're paying $10 for a tin, um, <laughs> which is a lot of money um you know uh so on a so they're cruise, gouging you, you which is what oh yeah they should do with these events oh they only do it once a year they got to get their money's worth yes yeah. yeah exactly right so they absolutely are gouging you it's like theme park prices of of food you know right so, so i should uh, say we so you call it carnival food we always call it fair food and uh, fair food. yes everything gets put onto a stick there's no doubt about that yeah. we i've even had pizza on a stick um, pizza on a stick. Yes, pizza wow. on a stick. Well, I mean, basically all they did was they tacoed the pizza and shoved a stick in it. That was that was it. Um, okay. It wasn't it wasn't anything genius, believe me. Um, and the the best fair food I've ever had was where they took a Krispy Kreme donut, and I'm sure you don't have Krispy Kremes in 
Australia, but yeah, yeah, we do. Oh, you do. Okay, so they take a Krispy Kreme <laughs> jelly filled donut and they Ooh. slice it in half, and then they take a glazed chicken breast and they put that, and that's your bun is the donut with the chicken uh-huh. breast in the middle, and oh my god, it's so good. Oh yes, it's I'd imagine it would be absolutely terrible for you, but it is. And then yeah. we even tried the deep fried Coke. The deep fried Coke. Yes. How do they do that? Um, essentially, they pour Coca Cola on a slice of angel food cake, and then deep fry it. <laughs> okay. Right. It doesn't make sense. And then for the we used to go to the fair with my in laws, and they loved fair food, so they would try whatever the wacky thing was. And one time we tried deep fried butter. D- deep fried butter. <laughs> so so you take a stick of butter and you roll it in the batter. And then you flash fry it and pull it out, and then you put it in a, uh, you know, the, the the cardboard boat, if you will, and uh-huh. basically it just oozes butter all over the place, and it was rather disgusting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know why you would want to buy that because it exists. <laughs> because because it's a thing that you can buy. It's it's there, you know. Um, we actually do have a a butter that there's a. A very small little n- niche, I think you could say, in the exhibition showgrounds. You wouldn't even know it was there. It's underneath a building, tucked away in an alley, and it's the the butter board. So the board that does butter, I guess. <laughs> you know, the the organization of butter. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It's really <laughs> weird. But I'm just trying go. to imagine the the kind of people that are on this organization on this board. Yes, on this board. Yeah. They're all sitting there. And yeah, I, don't, I can't even begin to imagine what it would look like. But anyhow, you can go there and the the Marlon Brando sitting are... in the other bed going, "Go give me the butter." Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the items you can get are bread and butter. Wow! Bread and butter. <laughs> what a novelty! <laughs> it's like it's like two dollars. I went, huh? It's bread and butter. Better be some pretty good bread. Um. Anyhow. Uh, and oh, like a ham <laughs> cheese. This is and... machine churned butter, and this is ham churned butter, and you this is be... goat I... butter. Uh... <laughs> I yeah, I can't believe it's not butter. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, it, it it's just uh, it's crazy the sort of stuff you see. And yeah, fair food, uh, carny food is is the, a different type of cuisine altogether. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, was, I, want, I want to get over to, um, I tease this to people, but I said I'd let you tell the deal. What is up with your star race at this uh, show? Uh, so star race uh, is on location. It's available for people to play. And uh, it, it has been earning a little bit of money. Uh, I checked the tin when I went there yesterday. I think there's about 20 bucks in there, which is about normal for the second day in. And considering that there was no play on the table, um, uh to yesterday because of the tournament it wasn't on coin drop yeah that's that's a good start but the other thing that um is going with star race is it's not my star race anymore ah! yeah someone has bought the star race from me and the story behind it was when i was setting it up um when i dropped it off and set it up i i had signs on it saying you know for sale um you know i had the price listed up there and and said make me an offer then 30 minutes it had sold so <laughs> not not too shabby to uh you know was the 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 price that you posted up was that kind of you're just like yeah it's kind of ridiculous but i'm gonna post that, that was price. that was my high that was my high starting price where i was no, prepared to negotiate down from there but the the person who um bought this game uh is well known in brisbane as being a massive gottlieb fan and um I, I met I met the person yesterday who actually bought the game, and uh, he's like he's just so passionate about Gottlieb's. It's 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 amazing. Well, that's awesome um, that you know that it's going to a, a home like that. You oh, know, yeah. somebody that's just going to you know lavish even more attention on it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like the you know, it's a it's a known fact that the back glass is probably the weakest part of that game at the moment. It's pretty in bad nick, so there's a high likelihood that he'll end up sourcing one from somewhere because he. He just has the money to do it. Um, so it, it will end up being like, it'll take what I've done to it with the playfield side of things and turn it into a really, 
really nice looking. I was gonna say, did, did he give you any uh, props for the job that you've done on the playfield? Oh yeah, he, he said he said thank you for the work you put into this game. Like it, he was very impressed with it when I met him yesterday, um, and very very glad that I was willing to sell it because this is there is it was confirmed that there is only one other one in Australia um, apart from mine. So wow. So it's, it's, so are you? It, it's not coming. It's not coming home with you at all, is it? Nope, it's not nope. coming home with me. I've got a I've got an empty space where a pinball used to sit. And um, do you have plans for that empty space? Yeah, I do. Uh, I've got a and I, I do have plans. Yes, plans. <laughs> but you're not going to share yes. those plans yet. Were you going to save well, that for another day? I'll, let's save it for another day. I think. But yes, it's not. I don't think it's going to be empty for long. Okay, uh, good. I, okay. I I would hate to uh, to you know you t- it took you a long time to finally get one, and I would hate to see it just then disappear again. I don't. Th- I think once you've had one, and you you can attest to this, once once you've had a pinball machine in your house, it, you're always going to probably have one in your house because it, it's just something that you you you, you need. <laughs> It's, it's a need, yeah. not a want. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with that. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> okay, uh, pinball whiz, did you miss anything from earlier in the podcast? Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You you can right. do that. You, you just rewind, man. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna summarize the last 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? No, I'm happy to do that for him because he's a good friend of the show. Pinball whiz. <laughs> we talked about stuff. And things. There you go. Which yeah. we do every week. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So I don't know if uh, any of you have been paying attention on the old uh, Twitters and uh, what gets shared and whatnot. But uh, Multimorphic, I think that's the company. The, uh, it is Multimorphic for P3. For P3, yeah. right. Who They are known for doing the everything. It, it's a basically a, a large screen TV as your playfield mm-hmm. service. And then yes. all of the mechanics attach to the top of it. And so you can rearrange and, and shift and shape however need be. But it's module based pinball. Yes. Mm. They posted uh, that they're putting machines out on site at Dave and Buster's. And they have video of it, a uh, little slick cabinet action going with light show. Man, and, uh, it's slick far out. That's an understatement. These things look great. Yeah. Like and... this, the chase lights or the chase led strips they've got on them really look amazing and they're uh they're linked together uh Mm. for whatever purposes those games are i'm not really familiar with any of the multimorphic games because i don't it'll be a very basic it'll be a like it's it's pinball but it'll be probably something like space invaders style where you've got like objects in the play field and and on the screen that's in the play field so it's kind of like it's kind of like in zacharia uh playing chase the lights where you're rolling the ball a little over. bit, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I have a feeling, like again, you're right. They didn't actually show a lot of um, gameplay of it, but I'll I'll tell them this: their sizzle reel for it is very convincing. It made me want to go and find a couple to play because it looked really interesting. So here's what I'm impressed with, though. So that is, and now that is actual real physical pinball. Okay. Yes. So you're gonna have those at Dave and Buster's. And then Zen is going to have their championship edition table at Dave and Buster's, which means mm-hmm. pinball is showing up out in a in the chain wild. store on a big scale. With more than one format. Exactly. That's the other thing. Exactly. To which then I go, where's our CUDA? Yeah. <laughs> Where, yeah. Interesting. Uh, because apparently everybody's making deals. <laughs> so. Uh-huh. I, and, yeah. and I certainly would say there's still room for them. It's not like, you know, you're, you're the only there, game in town. But you have to ask yourself, what, what can they bring with what we've seen on, on their product offering? What could they actually bring in that space that hasn't already been actually produced and out to market? Now, uh, they're going to have to partner with Zacharia and put Zacharia tables out <laughs> that they're the only ones left yeah, yeah because really. because well I mean you could go out there with your limited uh, selection of Farsight and Stern tables although I something no Stern wasn't going to be part of the Arcuda package 
which just no. means all you have left is the Gottlieb table. So, I mean, you could be out there with Gottlieb, but is that going to give you any attention? I don't know. <laughs> not likely. Not with not with the way that package is presented. No, but uh, if you went with Zachariah and did either their remakes or did specifically that Chase the Lights mode, um, at least you're something different. Chase the Lights would be compatible with Redemption, for sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you could do something with the remakes, I think. The remakes are fresh enough that they would be and relevant. And they play modern yeah. enough that uh, it would appeal to uh, more modern pinball players. But, you know, that's a, like, unless you had started a year ago building up that technology and that partnership, that's going to be a long delay for you to be able to get the same sort of integration that um, Zen is looking at implementing with their arcade products. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a big ask. So anyway, it's good to see that, uh, like I said, that uh, this stuff is a new generation of pinball, if you will, is filtering into uh, into these public spaces. Because I, I, I don't know. Do you have David Busters in Australia, Jared? No, no, we haven't got that chain. I mean, we have Carl's Junior, but we don't have David Busters. Carl's Junior, yeah. that's hamburgers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is. Dave, what is Dave & Buster's? Dave & Buster's is restaurant? Like Dave & Buster's is what you might, want to call, you might want to call it the original barcade. Um, it was set uh-huh. up to be, it's a giant space. They have full bar, full restaurant, and then they had all sorts of uh, arcade games. And what the arcade, and it started off arcade games with some redemption, and they still very much separate a redep- redemption center or section of it from the arcade games, but the arcade games are now all these giant versions of them. So like uh, you yeah. can play, you can play Connect Four digitally, and it's on like you know an eight by ten foot screen, basically. Yeah, one of those big like stadium screens. And yeah, like, yeah, everything is space ev- invaders. Everything is hypersized, and that's yeah, why yeah. that is why the Zen Championship Edition will fit in perfectly with there. Because it's yeah. all about flash and lights and grabbing attention in that manner. Um, yeah. you know, this, this is the kind of place that you would see, you know, those uh, the sit-down arcade racer games. It would be, you know, they'd have like four of them linked together. Yeah, and I know David, the ones that you're talking about, like uh, all the ones that Raw Thrills are producing, basically. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, yeah, th- there, there's Mario Kart versions. There's, I mean, they, these games have been around forever, right? But it, yeah. at most, an arcade would be able to have a bank of four of them. Usually, they'd only have yeah. two of them connected. Dave and Buster's will have eight. Oh, right. So they're massive, massive, massive footprints. games. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Um, so they're the mega arcade sort of style um, location base play. Right. I mean, and and what's funny is it's almost. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like the Las Vegas look of mm-hmm. arcade games, if you will. Yeah, I totally get it. So that's that's where it uh, it it comes into into play with what uh, Zen is doing with their table and why this uh, these two machines that they were showing for Multimorphic fits right in place with what Dave and Buster's is doing. Um, so and because they have dropped they dropped pinball a long time ago. Uh, yeah. Because again, it's but mechanical and it's, it takes maintenance. They literally. Uh... Uh, why would exactly right right you know why would they want to have something they need to actually fix on the floor when they can just plug these things in turn them on and maybe maybe change a belt in the interactive steering system on the car drive like on the car games occasionally you know yeah like these things now i know that all the uh, the, there's a couple of racing games that raw thrills so raw thrills are the the people who produce big buck hunter and and all those sort of big style big screen arcade games okay the ones who okay. who recently like redid cruising usa okay um, yeah exactly exactly mm. yeah i know what you're talking about and you know they they're exactly right they are all about you it's not a raw thrills game unless it's got neon everywhere and massive led like displays and like you know heads up displays at the top showing you all the action like these are and, big and the grandiose. seats rumble and and all that jazz oh, the, and yeah the audience platform. can watch and oh yeah these, these things are on motion platforms like you're driving the game it's got like a full-on like pneumatic motion platform that you're sitting on these things yeah massive coin you've got to drop in these things to actually you know acquire them and it, it, it's kind of like what used to be, uh, you know, when there was 
Sega produced Afterburner. And, you know, you oh, had yeah. The, you had the typical one where you just had the joystick and you play it, but then you had the full cockpit that rotated and, oh, yeah, and everything. Oh, yeah, 360. That yeah. thing was ridiculous. That, that thing, we had that on location when in the heyday of arcades in the time zone chain here in Brisbane, and it, it required three-phase power to the building. <laughs> This thing was like an actual, like it needed 415 volts to work. You, you know that, that uh, you know how I've talked about that, um, that that home arcade that I've been to that the guy had that was, uh, uh, you know, he basically had like a dungeon and it was, you know, built into his house and it was the just, mm. he has all the prototype machines. Um, yes. You know, he's the guy that has Kroll and he has... Uh, a white wood of, of wizard, blocks. wizard blocks and safe cracker and stuff. Yeah, he's got that uh, thing plugged into. <laughs> so he's got three phase into his house. Yes. Far yes. out. Okay. <laughs> because because he can. That's the reason. I mean, why, why not? Yeah. You know, <laughs> the other advantage is that you can you can also if you've got three phase into the house, you can then get one of those really sweet turbo ovens that Subway have, and uh, that cook your sandwich in like you know thirty seconds. You know, oh, because I was going to say he did he ha- did have a uh, a pizza oven built in uh just you know just on the other side of the arcade yeah okay sure <laughs> why not okay. like one that you see in a commercial pizza shop like a turbo jet oven that, uh, that cooks one, your pizza. Of, one of those you know brick ovens. conveyor belt styles oh, no, br- oh, no, right, no no yeah. no no it was it was a brick oven um brick oven. Yeah, and right. you know so basically it went arcade and brick oven pizza, pizza but in between that was the nightclub with the uh light oh. led <laughs> dance floor sure <laughs> okay right <laughs> <laughs> what, it, what it would be to have money like that i'm telling you, know? you it, it's it was the most spectacular place i've i loved it it's just you know oh the and that's not dreams. and that's not even mentioning the home theater that he had with uh oh, okay. full d-box uh seating uh oh, that, you know for geez. about 20 people yeah <laughs> okay sure <laughs> <laughs> where did he actually live oh hang on that uh, would have been in any one of those areas uh, <laughs> um, let me put it to you this way. His house was two miles away from Kobe Bryant's. Oh, okay. Right. So he was in, uh, <laughs> he was in a rather affluent neighborhood. A rather affluent where one house probably, because it was right there on the beach with their own private golf club. And <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, right. It gets better and better. Uh, one house probably would be, you know, in your $15 million range, but Right. He owned two, because oh, oh, right, there was okay. his house, and then there was the house next door that had all of this stuff that which he had dug down into the ground to build the subterranean, Mediterranean-looking facade that housed all of this other stuff. Wow! So he had a separate house for his entertainment equipment. Yes. Right. <laughs> Let's just get that clear. A second house. For his entertainment equipment. Yes. Okay. Okay, mate. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, again. Yeah. You got um, the money. Why not use it? Right. Um, hey, uh, for everybody that's watching here, if you have not already done so, why don't you go ahead and uh, follow us on uh, Twitcher? Because that would be Twitcher? amazing. And and I'll say this: if we can get, as soon as we get our fifty Twitch followers. Every Friday, I do Skills to Pay the Bills Friday, which is I play the Skills app, or, or well, it's the Skills app that's built into either the Zen Esports Edition or into the Williams Pinball app on iOS. And once we hit that, I will celebrate by actually playing a few of the $5 games. Yeah. And I say that because if you watched me this past Friday when I was just playing dollar games, I was losing left and right. <laughs> <laughs> um, which isn't friendly so that'll be the celebration for that or and this is really insane if I can if we can manage this but uh, when I do uh, any of the Twitch streams if other than this podcast well you know for right now I'll even let it be this podcast if we can get 20 live viewers I'll I'll do it for that also oh alright the challenge is on tell the your ch- friends the, the challenge is on and, and in case you're not sure what the schedule is uh, which is probably going to start changing soon because uh, school starting for the kid, and so I got to adjust for that. But it's uh, yeah. Mondays are mobile app challenge days. Wednesdays are going to be playing uh, Steam versions of pinball. Uh, Fridays is the skills app, 
and then Saturdays are obviously the podcast. So that's the uh, the schedule. This Wednesday, I'm planning on doing Zacharia Pinball for Steam. So that's what's going to happen on Wednesday. Uh, and the start times are always going to be around three o'clock ish. It's probably going it's going to be later on Wednesday. I can guarantee that. Probably more three thirty four. But anyway. So stick around, pay pay attention to those, please, and uh, give us a follow. Uh, also, give us a follow on YouTube, uh, and all you watching on YouTube, give the follow on Twitch. Come on, yeah, I don't even care if you watch; just give me the follow. <laughs> and, That's right. Um, and then don't forget about the uh, the socials right down there um, at Blockade being the the main uh, feature of our show. But we also have uh, at Shut Your Traps and at Jerk Marks. For yes. either of us, uh, have I missed anything? Uh, I don't think so. I think we're good. We're clear. We're we're clear. Okay, that's fantastic. We've we've made up for Jared's absence. That's right. Yes. Apologies for my absence. I have a late slip. <laughs> it, I mean, he sold his pinball machine. What do you want? I was doing important things. I was doing you know things with pinball. Which is important, like real pinballs. Very important. Right, you were doing things and stuff with real pinball. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, that being said, I think we've uh, we've exhausted our time here. So, uh, everybody, thank you so much for watching, listening, however it is you consume uh, these podcasts. We enjoy doing them. We'll continue doing them. And uh, hopefully you continue watching and listening to them. All right, until next time, Jared, say bye-bye. Bye-bye.